Hello. Welcome back to Summer Sea. Let's go to... Uh, I am a little bit low on fuel still. Let's go to Mount Hansa and then to Under Pearl. Back in the Undercrow. Let's bestow the Latitudinarian's forgiveness. The almost dead man has less to apologize for than he thought. Just like that, forgiven? The almost dead man is agape. He insists you repeat the exchange, probing it for falsehood or insincerity. Then he shakes his head with some effort and releases an immense sigh. For a moment, he resembles a bloated, beatific cherub. Hmm. Delivering a wrong comrade's retribution. You have gained a dying grace. Okay. Uh, I can deliver a final letter to the burning lady in Anti. One last message. The almost dead man clutches it to his chest. The third letter. She was. The man's voice catches. With a trembling hand, he caresses the decorated R on the seal. I never should have left her. The old man's fingers are loath to release the letter. When they do, the most moth trembles in his chest. The incomparable Aurelian has decency to look away. Mm. A pledge of undying love to one in Anti. You've accepted a love letter to be delivered to Anti, okay. Hmm. Ah, oh, I should have kept one sack of duck drop coffee beans. Hmm. Let's get a port report first. And then we can try. Ask the almost dead man to rejoin the seven against Naida. Once he was Lorenzo, their guide, will he be so again? He laughs, and the laugh becomes a wheeze, which becomes a cough, which makes the most moth stir restlessly behind his ribs. Too late. My time's up, citizen. Marion will have to find another guy. He purses his dried lips, tried the Isle of Cats, his piratical majesty's chiefest claw. Crossed paths with them more than once, I did. Almost had me that last time. Isery, that's their name. He remembers one more thing, and if you have better luck this time, it'd be good to be remembered. I don't need an arch or a statue. Just carve my name on Nida's bones. They'll do me. All right. Isari, who dwells on the Isle of Cats, may replace Lorenzo. Interesting. Okay, that's all we could do here. Yep. Yep, there's nothing else we could do here. So let's go back to... Hmm. Should we drop our officer in Codex? I have done the other option before. Um... Officer, this dude. The first officer. I've done the other, uh, the suggest another option before, which needs three unaccountably peckish. Uh, this option, you will have to take him to King Eater's castle here, and you do something terrible to him. Something very, very terrible. Which if you're interested, you should look it up. 
because it is very interesting and you get to keep him as your officer I think he's pretty he's a pretty good officer too if you decide to keep him because the other two options will uh, leave him he will abandon you basically but I think she's not bad uh, first officer as well not sure if the change sigil rhythm navigator would be better should I do it though? Should I bring him to the King Eater's castle? Let me know. Let me know what you want me to do. going back to London and then I realized since I need to deliver this letter to Auntie anyway to Rosina and Auntie's nearby I might as well do it now right okay let's Ooh, we can read the love letter to Auntie I forgot to read the one for the latitudinarian hmm oh well it would seem a shame not to <laughs> hmm 81% chance though. Let's try. I succeeded. My dearest Rosina from your Lorenzo. The letter is sincere, passionate, explicit. It's hard to tell which of these are frantic acts performed in the excitement of battle and which are imagined flourishes. The letter speaks with more than lust. It recalls Rosina's ministrations after an accident and a bone hollowness after parting. It ends with a joke it trusts the reader to understand. You do not. Okay. okay let's go to Auntie, go to Rosina. And then let's... Let's hope... Ah, uh, I, I feel like this might actually... Hmm... Okay, this might actually make her sad and make her condition worse, which will make my life harder because I need more drowny hymns. But, but let's fulfill Lorenzo's last wishes. A love letter carefully consumed. Rosina will not deny the letter, but at your warnings, she takes every precaution. Her nurses prepare fresh eyes for the tub. One sings a somber hymn. Another transcribes the letter onto separate pages, each sentence. To be administered as the burning lady's disposition allows her to receive them. Rosina reads slowly. She looks in your direction. Her expression is fierce, as though you were talking in church. You step away into the other room until she is ready for you to return. Already you have seen enough. The page in her hand curls languorously from the heat. Ooh. Okay, I've delivered a love letter to Auntie has been reset, a conclusion or a new beginning. Delivering news of a lover's warm response. Okay, is that it? Is that it? Oh. That's it, I guess. Why do I still- okay, it's gone. Um, let's consider your own condition. Get more sharpness. Oh, it's a 56% chance of success. Can I get another sharpness? No. Okay, let's try... Boop. I succeeded. Yep, can take on another sharpness. Okay, it gets harder and harder. I want... The tongue. Undergo accumulation of the tongue. 
give up soft speech and slow words, come to know poets, court jesters, liars, and artists in cipher. Tang Point Pinnacle, the sharp tongues gather on a point of rock. There is little room for newcomers. The wit is crisp and dry. The diction is precise. Nothing is learnt and nothing said in error. Interesting. Okay, I don't think I can do anything with the tongue. Let's go back to a chamber. I'm wondering if I can do a thing. Yeah. Provide a dry lecture on the social stratification of visage. I think I need the tongue one for this, if I'm not wrong. There. Yep. Obscure pedantry might be just the thing for Rosina. You have the tongue to tell it. Creative tedium. You explain the mask. You establish the ethic associated with each one. You rely upon the most technical of anthropological vocabulary. You allow yourself some reflections upon theories of esquivalence as they pertain to performative duties in highly dissimulative societies. Rosina's nurse touches your elbow. First sound sleep she's had in weeks, she whispers, with a nod at the resting patient. It'll do wonders for her, especially if she can avoid dreaming. Oh, I've gained seven. Rosina's health. Nearly recovered. <gasps> oh! Oh! Witness Rosina's recovery. She has been looking better and better. All I need to do was sharpness in tongue. If you are hoping for praise, gratitude, and perhaps some thankful tears, they are not forthcoming. Bring my logbook, Rosina tells her nurses. I need to review the records. She looks in your direction. Would you be able to replicate the treatment you gave me? Sure. Offer your services. If she would benefit from being taught the means of treatment, you would be more than happy. Yep. This would be rewarding if you succeed, terrifying if you fail all. Thankfully, it's a 100% chance. An exact accounting. You explain everything that you did, the resources you used, the sources from which you got them. Rosina cross-references this information with her records. Line up the temperature and state of sleep with each dose, she tells her nurses. Don't leave anything out. We will cure this in the end. Nice. She's recovered. Speak to her about her history. How did she come to take Animusons? I ran the Animusons hospital in Adam's way. I was scrupulous was never present when the patient burst into flame. When I felt too much pity, I would reassign staff, but I was less cautious outside the hospital. She goes to her stock of instruments and swabs each in ice water. I had received news that an enemy of mine was shamed and embarrassed. I was so carried away with angry pleasure. I actually think I was talking to myself. Of course, in that mood, I was far too vulnerable not to take the disease. When an animescent beggar combusts in the street, the Nidahin sent him to infect me. Ah. What news gave her such angry pleasure? She's being elusive about the detail. A savage smile. The presbyterate do not share their immortality, she says, and she holds a blade in the flame. But one of them made an exception for his daughter and broke all the laws of his kind to send her the gift because he hoped it would reconcile the rift between them. Her face is blank where anger would be if her spleen were not a prism. Miriam, the daughter, she gave the gift away to a Kaganian general to spite her father and punish the presbyterate. The last person they would have wanted to immortalize, I found the outcome satisfying. Okay. Okay. Let's restore Rosina to her role as the healer of the seven. She is recovered now and the cause needs her. Will she return? Vengeance. Rosina's smile is as sharp as her spleen. Yes. I have unsettled business with the Nidahin. Tell Miriam I am ready. 
and thank you, citizen, for allowing me a second opportunity. I have been unable to consider revenge these last ten years for fear of accelerating my condition. Now, I find it difficult to think of anything else. Yes. How many do we have now? Quite a few. I think that's all we could do here, but let me check how many do we have. The Ambition. We have Eric, we have Rosina, Bourdain, and Batuk. We need the Fierce Philanthropies to replace the Financier and Isery to replace Lorenzo as the guide. Who will replace Miriam? Hmm. But we'll find out next time. As for now, we shall... Let's go back to the Undercrow to deliver the message for Lorenzo. In the undercrow, recount Rosina's response to the almost dead man. What did she say? Eagerness is unbecoming on a bulbous cadaver. Tell him quickly. Giddy as an almost dead schoolboy, his wheezing turns to laughter. Even the Aurelian shares his smile. For a moment, the damn cave has the warmth of home. Nothing more to be said. Yep, dying grace. I can share tales of the outside with the almost dead man. Ah, citizen, he raps. Humor an old man, tell me of your journeys. It's not easy to impress. Yeah, I think I've done this before. Yep. Observe a private moment. A hushed conversation between the incomparable Aurelian and his aging master. A moment demanding reverence and privacy, or at least discreet eavesdropping. I succeeded. Deathbed confessions. The almost dead man's voice is barely a whisper. His friends bend low to hear it. I found the paths the others followed. We meant to retrieve what Nida stole, and share it with all, but... A racking cough consumes him. When it abates, he continues. Instead... The mountain gave me a gift of its own. You won't pin it in one of your displays, will you? The Aurelian can barely stifle a damp laugh. Of course not, sir. No spreading board could hold you. Are you becoming a moth? I mean, he does call him a most moth. The end nears. The almost dead man hopes to end a complicated life with a clear conscience. Again, dying grace. Attend to the hatching. The almost dead man's breathing has faded to a rattle. Joylessly, the incomparable Oriden says, It's time. 70% chance. I can't raise this anymore. A dying grace. I succeeded. At long last. The passage is gentle, but not without horrors. You ensure that pain is kept to a minimum, while the incomparable Oriden sits by the old man's side, taking notes on one hand and holding his mentor's hand with the other. There is almost no trashing, and once everything is still, the translucent wings quiver in the cave smoke. The notebook is filled. Lorenzo's face is serene and empty. Feathered antenna brush across it, 
multifaceted eyes regard you with curiosity. Wordlessly, the incomparable Orion hands you a small velvet bag as payment, then returns to meticulously reproducing every scale of the most moth wings in the new notebook. Lorenzo has shed his life. I've got a thousand echoes and I've gained a secret. Oh. You mean like Lorenzo is the cocoon? And the most moths hatch from Lorenzo? Okay. Okay. Deal with what's left behind. Lorenzo, the most moth, stretches its scaled wings lazily. The incomparable Orion continues his sketches without a thought of his old master's corpse shell. Drawn to the fire. Reluctantly, the Orion closes his notebook. If I keep the lighthouse fire burning, I could observe you for a lifetime, he tells the moth. But there is a final matter of his to deal with. He turns to the crumpled remains of the almost dead man. His brother, the factor at Port de Mo, will want something to bury. He can make do with this husk. With a rush of wind, the most moth flies up into the fog, circling the fire and casting flickering patterns onto the cave walls. Lorenzo has shed his life, but his light lingers in his friends. And now, Lorenzo's husk. Okay. Ah. Uh, I can discuss Lorenzo's passing. The incomparable Orion sits on the stone table that was his friend's deathbed listlessly staring at his collection. A quiet celebration. Without looking up, the incomparable Orion tells you that your assistance has been appreciated. Studying the most moths so closely will be the highlight of my career, he says excitedly. I'm sure Lorenzo would want to thank you as well. Ah. A fate worse than death. Looking up from his book of press moths, the incomparable Aurelian fixes you with his stare. Lorenzo came to the knees looking for a way to cheat death. I can't say whether or not he succeeded. If Lorenzo has become the moth, maybe in a weird way, I can tell him Lorenzo lost or tell him Lorenzo triumphed. Hmm. This seems to be a kindness. Tell him Lorenzo triumphed. Some part of him eluded death. He lives on. A triumph over death, albeit a messy one. Life is unreliably pleasant, but it's better than the alternative. Lorenzo found a way to prolong it. It was, after all, why he came to the need. The incomparable Orion sighs. He has a new life now, maybe a happier one. He closes his collection book with a quiet smile. Nothing is worse than death. I can still speak with the incomparable Aurelian. You catch him between tending to his friend's corpse and preserving a particularly curious cave moth. Quiet and contented. Just detailing the latest pattern of Lorenzo's wings. I believe they change in conjunction with the false stars, although it'll take some study to be sure. Somewhere high above, you can hear the slow, steady beating of Lorenzo's wings. He returns every so often. Misses the smell of the fire, I suspect. I see. So it's just the incomparable Aurelian here now. Okay. I guess that's the end to the story in the Undercrow as well. We finished a lot of the stories this time. Undercrow, anti for the most part for Rosina. Um, we pretty much finished Scream Shander as well. I think Nook can be explored some more. Hide away, there's some more to go. We're actually approaching a lot of the final stories. Not bad, not bad. And now we shall make our way back home, I suppose.
we're back in low bonnet. Let's see what we can do here. Not much. Trade stories with the congregation. Yeah, we do need some special things for the contest. Mm. Let's speak of Rosegate. It is an exceptional cigar shop. Luxuriously rolled, we describe the gleaming cabinets of cigars, the impressions of far-flung places conjured by each puff, the uplifting bite of freshly cut grass under surface sun, the dark whiff of lightless cellars stacked with mushroom wine, the sweating, savage scents of London's flesh pots. Your audience inhales in unison, savouring imaginary smoke. Okay. I'm trying to give them like a uh, port reports that I've already given to London. Hmm, I think Rack. Yeah. If nothing else, you could warn them not to visit. New Heights. You describe a city built from shipwrecks. A colossal, tipsy tower lashed together by sentient weed. The weed commands the city's inhabitants to wreck more and build higher. The tower has already broken the surface and is extending towards the cavern roof. Only last week, it caught its first dirigible. Okay. And I think I go... Oh, I cannot give Aiko? Interesting. NT hideaway in look, I think I haven't given to uh, the Admiralty yet. I'm not sure about the Undercrow though, but I think not yet either. Okay, enough for now. I don't think we can do anything else. Four, we need four for this. Next time then. Next time. Because we don't have the stories for the story contest anyway. So, did I get poor report yet? I think so, let's go. Uh, back to London we go. We're back in London. Okay. The blind bruiser the blind bruiser has something for us. That's rare. These times. Uh where do you want me to go? Khan's heart, okay. I will remember that. I will try to remember that. An offer for your sunlight, yes, yes. And Wait, visit the Museum of Mistakes. The Dead Wing houses the museum's collection of human remains. The curator, a gaunt tomb colonist in immaculately laundered bandages, leads you through dim, twisting corridors, past dusty glass cases, sarcophagi, and tables of jumbled exhibits. I can acquire the ender of critics' lost Ushapti. The Museum of Mistakes would never be so crass as to consider trading such a valuable piece. Specifically, declares the curator, here is the price it would not be so crass as to ask. A lamentable relic, sure. A transaction is not made. It is not made in the shadows by the exit, and when it is not complete, it is definitely not the curator himself running dusty fingers across every curve of your little gift. The modiste examines the Ushapti. Splendid! There is a small fragment of mirror embedded in the poor dear's left eye. A long story, which like most of the best stories, involves explosives. When we are ready, I will send a challenge through Parabola. She will not be able to resist. The pain alone should provide sufficient incentive. 
use the Ushapti at sea to summon the Parrot Poet. You can also find her sailing in LKS class vessel on the undersea. She require a rematch. Let's go to the Admiral. Let's pass on strategic information. Her. Okay, let's give him our port reports. Which one we haven't given him? Uh, I go. I think I've already given I go, right? Yeah, unchanged. We only get uh, new favors if it's a new report. Who else? Scream Shander. First hand report from the depths of history, eh? Nothing too candid, I trust. Yeah, I've already given this one as well. How about the Undercrow? Nothing more than mods, I trust. Yeah, this is a new one. Yep, yep, yep. Let's give him anti. Are you, are you half stone now by any chance? Maybe. And we can give Nook as well. So you've been to the Great Mall, have you? Yes, yes, I have. No clothes at all. Wild orgies. Fights to the death in the the all together. The secretary glows crimson as he stares at your report. Tell me everything slowly. Oh, you want to know everything, huh? There's Starhood. Oh, the Emerald collects these. Did you ask a drowny to marry you? No, I, do I didn't. There's also Hideaway, a city on what? On a crab. And I think that's all. That's all of the port reports. Oh yes, we have that port report of Fallen London as well. It's to be given to the Brass Embassy. Should be this one, yes. Port report of Fallen London. Why did you come here? Yes. Have you been to the Republic then? Did you want to tell me something? The street is spinning. There was something in your throat. It crowded your mouth. It was hard and noble as horn or coal. It spoke rapid gleeful sentences in one of the languages of hell. It cut your lips when it crawled from your mouth. You're the street outside the embassy. There's a lump of scintilla in your hand. For memories, the urbane devil told you. I got a lump of blue scintilla. Interesting. 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 